Guys, we're sitting here. It is the 20th anniversary month of uh, Final Fantasy XI. Everybody's been celebrating 20 years of this amazing game. Unfortunately, I haven't been playing at all. And this is for a couple of reasons. I haven't had a ton of time to play games this whole month. That's why I've had a couple less videos. I really haven't been in doing anything. Work's kicking my ass. I've been away a lot. Stuff's been going on. Now, one of the reasons, and uh, I've been super open about this on stream. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know, we do stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Lots of 11 and 14, but other games as well. So definitely come by and say hi. Uh, but yeah, one of the reasons that I haven't been playing as much was because, unfortunately, the 20th anniversary announcements were a bit of a letdown for me personally. Doesn't mean there's not a lot to celebrate, and what they did wasn't amazing for the game, and, you know, celebration of 20 years of, of Vanna Deal in general. Totally was. Game's totally awesome. But what I was looking for wasn't necessarily there, and it leaves me in a bit of a, a pickle. Because one of the things that I've been most hopeful for for the future of Eleven is something that I've missed out of 11 for a long time. Let's talk about it. So hey guys, it's Unfor Games, where we talk a lot about nostalgia games that I love, like Final Fantasy XI. Uh, if it's your first time here, welcome. If not, welcome back. So what was it about the 20th anniversary that disappointed me in general in terms of what would drive me to play more Final Fantasy XI right now? And it's one of the biggest struggles of having a game that you love that you've been playing for almost 20 years. There aren't a ton of surprises anymore, especially with exploration. Final Fantasy XI is one of the biggest game worlds that I've, you know, spent this amount of time in. It's, it's, it's massive. There's so many corners, hidden secrets, fun stories, hidden monsters. But over, you know, 20 years of playing, a lot of that kind of goes away. You've seen most of it. And that's no fault of Final Fantasy XI. Very few games can continue to offer surprises after 20 years. And Final Fantasy XI still does. Don't get me wrong. They're just much fewer and far farther, further between. Just fewer and few. You don't have a lot of them. For a while, I could keep this kind of like in the back of my head, because when I'm not playing for pure nostalgia and just the love of the game, which, you know, I do a lot, I've got this hope about the future that like more is coming. And for a long time, I thought the 20th anniversary was going to be what delivered that next big thing. And no matter what the 20th anniversary ended up bringing, I'd hope that it would reintroduce some of that freshness, some of that feeling of exploration, of, of newness, of trying something again for the first time, whether that be any of the number of things that, that players thought might come with the 20th anniversary. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on who you are and what you were expecting, uh, it's mostly just continued voracious resurgence leading up to uh, a new uh, Rima level weapon that we can work our way up towards um, and the plus two, plus three Imperium stuff. All cool. If you've been enjoying what's going on with Final Fantasy XI right now, I don't see why you'd be disappointed with this. It's going to be good stuff. But yeah, unfortunately for me, one of my favorite parts of Final Fantasy XI was the exploration, finding new areas, discovering new challenges, and facing off against new enemies. And then finding what was easy or difficult about those encounters and areas, and maybe changing and leveling a new job to fit those new challenges. I loved that kind of back and forth, right? I'd end up at a new part of the game, and I was like, oh, Summoner's been great up until this. It's not that useful for this, and it made me want to level Monk or something. I loved that flow, and it was awesome. And don't get me wrong, that's still there. There are certain fights and challenges where I'm like, man, Summoner's not super useful for this, or Blue Mage isn't super useful for this. I wish I had Dragoon geared up at level 119. That would be amazing. But it's mostly the same fights in the same condensed areas around the same kind of topics. Maybe that'll change with this new Rima flow. We don't really know how that's going to be released yet. Still could be more to come, but ultimately Final Fantasy XI in its current state is still kind of focused at that end game purpose, and the rest of the game has been pushed to the side by, by design. So the 20th anniversary came and there weren't some of the updates that we maybe hoped or expected to see. More about the master level system and how it could draw in some of the older camps that we missed and kind of revisiting and rejoining those areas of the game. Uh, obviously there's no remaster or classic server style announcement that we've heard of yet. And at this point I wouldn't really expect to see it. Um, there's no huge graphical overhaul to add that freshness of like, okay, we're experiencing Vanna Deal, the, the Vanna Deal we know, but it's got this huge new coat of paint, so every area you visit is kind of like seeing it for the first time. All of those were very lofty wishes, and I didn't really expect to see them, but somehow it still seems like it's mostly just, it's, it's going to be the same condensed version of Eleven that we've been playing, continued maybe a little bit further. And that's okay. 
If you're just getting into Final Fantasy XI right now in, in retail and you're like, oh my gosh, is, is Hunter <laughs> Games saying that like, there's no way to, no, there's tons to enjoy. And there's still the whole game of leveling that you can experience. I've just done it a lot in the game's current form and I've, I've kind of hit my limit of like what I get super excited about. So I'm still trying to understand what I'm hoping for next with Final Fantasy XI. And where this leads me to is that right now I'm looking to a lot of other older MMOs trying to find that feeling of newness and exploration that I've been missing so much in Final Fantasy XI. Because ultimately, for the most part, in Final Fantasy XI, there's nothing new in the world itself. There's nothing new to explore, no new NMs to find, uh, nothing really to figure out. There's a couple new camps to like understand, like the Crawler's Nest 119 camp. I still haven't done that. I would love to hear how, how people have been enjoying that or not. Um, no new farming spots to learn as, as the population grows or, or dwindles and things open up or, or new opportunities arise, that that is mostly dissipated. Like I said, 11 is huge, so it takes a long time before there's not really that much left to explore and experience, but there is still a limit, and I think a lot of us have sort of hit it. And I bring all this up not to be a downer on Final Fantasy XI. Final Fantasy XI is still an amazing game, and I hope you're enjoying it and playing it in retail right now, or even the private server classic experience. Uh, tons of fun there, and I encourage you to check it out if you never have. Amazing game. And uh, it's not going to be the last time I hop in. It just a lot of people have been asking why I've been playing this month, and I felt like I should probably answer. I was a little bummed, a little bummed about the announcement, and uh, I think the hopes of something greater on the horizon, something coming in the future, was kind of like stringing me along a little bit. And I was like, I'm going to keep prepping my character and getting ready and doing the Voracious Resurgence quest line and stuff like that, which is good, by the way. Don't get me wrong. I've been enjoying the storyline for Voracious Resurgence a lot. I'm excited to see where that goes. But I think I was more hopeful than I realized for what the 20th anniversary was going to bring. And when it ended up being not necessarily what some of us hoped, <laughs> took the wind out of my sails a little bit with the urge to, to keep hopping in some Final Fantasy XI. Um, but yeah, when people ask, like, why aren't you playing and why are you more excited for games like Pantheon, uh, Rise of the Fallen, or Ashes of Creation that, that are still un unclear on when they're going to come out, Besides the obvious, like, you know, just cool gameplay element stuff that, that I've been excited about seeing, it's the newness of it all. It's it's the freshness. It's something I haven't experienced before. It's, it's whole new worlds and, and game systems and interactions, monsters to find. Everything is new, and there's something to be said for that. This seems super obvious, but uh, it has come up a lot. A lot of people are like, are you done playing Final Fantasy XI? And I don't think so. I think I'm just kind of in a, a downswing right now. I tend to come out of it eventually. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be back. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, I'm never hopping on again. And then, you know, three months later, I'm on. But I have been super uh, interested in, in checking out some other games that over the years I haven't really had a chance to explore. Uh, one of which was EverQuest, which I've only dabbled in a couple times. It's like Project 99. But they just started up a, um, a progression, time lock progression server where every, uh, I think it's like eight to 12 weeks, they introduce the next expansion. Uh, it, it came out like two weeks ago, so it's still pretty early on into the original EverQuest, but it's uh, it's official. It's not the Project 99, which, uh, while being supported by the developers, isn't supported technically or financially by the developers. Um, it's it's fan run. And I think that's still the best way, from what I've heard, to play EverQuest if you want to do experience EverQuest as it was, you know, back in 1999, essentially. But the, the time lock progression servers are probably the next best thing where the leveling is a little bit slower than the retail experience, uh, which I, I love that idea for Final Fantasy XI too, bes between the like true era-based leveling speed of the classic private servers and something much slower than current retail where you're flying, just maybe like one and a half or two times faster. <laughs> I don't think it would break anything, but it might help uh, ease some of the, the players in that are struggling with the intense grind from the, the mid 2000s. Anyways, um, yeah, I've been curious about checking out the EverQuest time lock progression servers because I've never actually experienced EverQuest for myself. And it's this, you know, massive world that led to Final Fantasy XI. Obviously, XI took a lot of inspiration from EverQuest, uh, which the, I think was always known, but um, the We Are Vanity Deal campaign has definitely shown a huge light on how influential EverQuest truly was to XI experience. And uh, I've never played it. So was kind of curious about that, but I'm always hesitant because it's hard to jump into an even older game than one of the oldest games that I still play. Uh, graphically, it is it is a little rough, and uh, 
certainly the gameplay elements are are very old but i've heard amazing things i'm curious let me know if you're checking it out if you're already playing i'd be curious to hear your thoughts um and in addition to that uh, Lord of the Rings Online just celebrated its like 15th anniversary kind of recently. So similar to 11, celebrating a big thing. But uh, similar to 11, it has a huge cult following of people that love that game and consider it one of the uh, the best MMOs to have ever been made. And it's it certainly has a huge amount of content in it if, if you enjoy the gameplay and, and the style. And I've struggled to get into it before. But uh, every once in a while, I say, this is going to be the time. I'm going to go check it out. I'm going to go play it. So let me know if you've ever played Lord of the Rings Online and uh, what your experience was with that. But again, even though these are older games, I'm not saying they're superior to Final Fantasy XI. I don't think they are. Uh, there's just a lot that I've never done in them, namely all of it. I haven't done anything in them. But there's, there's just so much to play that I haven't experienced. And that's what I'm kind of craving right now. It's something totally new and fresh that I haven't experienced, a world that I can dive into, gameplay that I can figure out for the first time, classes to uh, better understand and explore and get excited about leveling, that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean, the biggest strength of new games is their newness. Uh, even if the game itself is kind of old, uh, it's new to me. So that's where I struggle with 11 sometimes, and I think I was just hopeful that the 20th anniversary would, uh, would smack that smack that around and add some newness or some excitement to uh, Final Fantasy XI. And it was more of like a celebration, which we talked about before. But um, yeah, just wanted to share. Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, this isn't really supposed to be a bash of the 20th anniversary. I think they did a great job celebrating the 20 years of the game. It's amazing to see it's still running. Um, and we can definitely talk more on stream. Uh, like I said, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I would love to hear your thoughts on the 20th anniversary on Final Fantasy XI's current state on uh, the private server status and all that kind of stuff. Just kind of want to hear where, everybody, where everybody's at. But um, yeah, it was it was a great celebration. Just didn't offer maybe what I was really hoping for in terms of uh, content-wise. So curious to see what's next around the corner for Final Fantasy XI. The good news is we're only halfway through Virgin's Resurgence, uh, according to their announcement. So we've got another uh, year of that leading into... Who knows? Actually, I wonder what the timeline is on the new Rima weapon. Is that the at the end of Racist Resurgence? Because that would be <laughs> that would be a very Square Enix thing to be like, yes, new content coming 2023 at the end of Racist Resurgence. Anyways, want to hear your thoughts? But uh, let me know if you're playing any of the games I described or something else. Um, I know a lot of player uh, players, a lot of fans, viewers, people. I'm looking for the wrong word. Uh, people we've been chatting with in uh, in stream. Um, have been playing a number of, of games to kind of solve the the MMO miss, the the scratch, the itch, delete all that. But yeah, I want to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll uh, get back on the regular schedule of videos. It has been really rough. Work has been kicking my my bootay, and uh, life's been busy. But plan to get back on the regular schedule. Let me know in the comments what you think about what I've been talking about, and I'll see you guys all in the next one. Peace. I think it's their biggest problem because I feel like right now they're not driving people towards streams and nothing about the experience says like the whole like you're home hang out let's chat they're just like we'll feed you more YouTube videos we got as many just keep diving deeper there's more YouTube videos where that comes from